Today I am flying from Athens all the way to Dallas, but with a transit through London. And I know lots of people ask about how much time you need to transit through London Heathrow. And I will tell you right now that I make sure that I have at least three and a half to four hours to transit. But what I'm gonna show you today is exactly how long it takes me to transfer between terminals. Now I've pre-looked this up. I'm landing in terminal five and I have to go to terminal three. And so I'm going to see how long it takes me from basically when we land to when I get to the next terminal. I would say I'm gonna take you all the way to the gate, but because I have such a long layover, a lot of times in London Heathrow, they don't announce the gates till about an hour before the flight takes off. So unfortunately I won't be able to show you exactly how long it takes you to get to the gate, but I'm gonna show you how long it takes you to transit. So at least you have an idea of what it all entails. We landed at what was 10.04 local time, not 12.04. Okay, so my whole plan to show you how long it transits from touchdown to now has been slightly messed up because somebody's had a medical emergency and we're not able to leave the plane. So another reason that you need many hours in Heathrow. So I just got off the plane. I had to change the time. So it says, you know, earlier it was 12, but it was actually 10 here. Um, so it took us about 20 minutes because of that medical emergency. You have to be prepared for the things you can't prepare for. And now we have to walk to the sign that says where your next flight is to and then get on a bus to go to that next terminal. So let's see how long this takes. It's now 10.28 and my terminal is listed, but my gate is not, which doesn't surprise me because my flight is until 1.50. Let's go get to terminal three. Well, it didn't take me very long to get down to the bus, but there's a huge line and the bus only holds so many people at a time. So I'm gonna be here for a while before I can even get on the bus to go to terminal three. This is why I always give myself this much time. On the bus now. Let's see how long it takes. Sometimes this ride is really long and sometimes it's not. All right, it was 12.50, sorry, 10.50 when we got off the bus. Um, and now I have to go through security again. And I had to stop for a minute and get my liquids out and things like that, but I can't film in security. So I'll see you guys on the other side. Okay, I've made it through security. It, it got down the escalator at like 11.11. So it's taken me over an hour since we landed to get here. So actually that's not bad. I've had it take much longer. Um, fortunately, my bag didn't get pulled aside at security. It has before and lots of other people's were. So you just never know what's gonna happen. But because I don't have my gate yet, now it's just like wandering around. I would say that if you're coming and you know where your gate is and you're going immediately there, you probably only need like 10 minutes if you're close, but you might need 20 minutes to walk from here to your gate, 20 minutes. Keep in mind, I didn't stop anywhere along the way. So if you needed to get off the flight and go to the bathroom, then you need to account for that. So. You need, according to the Heathrow website, you need 90 minutes to do a transfer from Terminal 5 to Terminal 3. Even once you get down the escalator from security, you're not really at Terminal 3. You still have to walk, which is what I'm doing now. And then you get into the main part and then you have to wait and see like how far away your gate's gonna be. I've had to go all the way to the other end of the terminal and the signs will say it's a 20 minute walk. <laughs> And keep in mind, they don't announce your gate till about an hour before departure. So it's a little bit chaotic here in Heathrow. So if this has felt a bit chaotic, that's because it is. I feel like Heathrow is this super chaotic place. I was watching these people come in and take their break because they work in the airport and they just, I can't imagine working here in this chaos of like, and every time I come here, it doesn't matter what time of the year, it's like this. So, 
I'm really glad I don't work here. Let's just put it that way. Luckily, I have the American Airlines app on my phone and it has told me my gate earlier than the board. The board still hasn't said what gate number that I'm leaving from. It still says it's gonna be another like, I think it said another like 15 minutes. It's now almost 12.15 local time. But about 20 minutes ago, I got a notification on my phone saying that it was gate 27. So I'm sort of in the middle of where you come out from security, where all the shops and the restaurants are. I've had something to eat. And now I'm gonna see how long it's gonna take me to walk to the gate. It says, I think it said 20 minutes max from here. So let's see. Okay, it's 12.18. Let's see how long it takes. I'm just gonna walk at like my normal pace and see what happens. it's 12 23 i did stop to take a photo <laughs> uh, but this gate is not as far this section of heathrow goes to like gate 42 or 43 i may even 44. here has got gate 31 listed as the last on this particular section but i know it goes further than that uh, my gate's from 27 i've never left from 27 i've always left from one of the really far gates so, you know, it's estimate of how long it takes was very wrong. Um, and I've noticed that with the other ones, like they say it's 20 minutes, it's really like 15. But if you're, you know, cutting it close, going all the way to the end of this terminal is far. As you can see, it just keeps going and going down that way. And then I believe it makes a left turn. And that's usually where I leave from. So I'm actually kind of shocked that it says 27. I wonder if they're gonna change the gate. Overall, today went really smoothly and that doesn't always happen at Heathrow. I have a couple of tips for you if you're transiting through here. One, allow yourself at least three, four hours. I try to aim for four. That way it's not so stressful if something happens then make sure that when you check in, if your ticket was booked on the same airline, that you have your boarding pass for your second flight, because if not, you're gonna have to stop at the desk and get that, and that can be short. I've seen there be no one there, and I've seen the line be 20 to 50 people deep. Next thing is be prepared at security. Have your liquids out, have your laptop accessible, so that way you're not like wasting a lot of time. Don't wear a belt. Make sure everything is out of your pockets and make sure that like you haven't forgotten some kind of liquid somewhere in something because that's gonna slow you down and they're probably gonna pull you aside for extra like checks. That's happened to me before. Usually it doesn't take very long, but if you've only allowed yourself to 90 minutes, you may not make it. There was two earlier flights to Dallas. The first one is at 10.30. I definitely would not have made that one. There was another one at 12.50. I probably could have made that one, but I think when I was booking it, I was like, nope, it's not enough because if something had happened either in Athens, and actually we were delayed 25 minutes from Athens. Somehow we made it up in the air. And then of course we had the 20 minutes sitting at the gate for the medical emergency. Fortunately, I think that person was okay for those of you asking. Um, so those are just my tips for that. Um, check and see how long all that's gonna take you. Be prepared. If you think you're gonna make a tight connection, I would say make sure that you either have your carry-on and you have everything in it you need or you, uh, and you don't check any bags or you check your bag and be okay with it and not making the flight. Now we go to Dallas and hopefully I sleep. Wish me luck. I'm in premium economy today, and the only seat that I really liked was the bulkhead seat. I don't love sitting here because I have to put everything in the overhead compartment, but you do get lots of leg room. I also don't like that the TV is down there. I'm also not seeing a plug for my phone, so let's hope that there's some sort of USB plug for my phone. Otherwise, uh, it's gonna be dead by the time I get to Dallas, and that will be bad. I found it. It's way back there in an inconvenient spot, and I've done this before, and now I remember. This seat was totally messed up. 
my buttons didn't really work and because I'm short I needed to lift up the seat and then I couldn't get the controller out for the entertainment system. One of my top tips when flying on any plane with an entertainment system is to browse through either the movies or the TV shows that you think you want to watch and save them to your favorites. So that way you're not searching through them every single time you want to watch something new. I ordered a gluten-free meal for this flight and it was so much better than the regular food. I wish I had recorded the previous meal as well. They were both amazing. And on this one, I got way more fruit than everyone else. We had to wait about 20 minutes for someone to come and bring the jet bridge to the plane so that we could even get off. And the captain kept coming on and explaining what was happening, but of course, he couldn't make them come any faster. They've never seen us had to wait for the jet bridge for so long. You know, I've had to wait like five minutes, but this was like a 20 minute wait. Our bags are gonna be waiting for us by the time we get through immigration. Because we were so delayed when we were getting off the plane and I got through immigration, they had actually started to pull our bags off the carousel belt. So then it was sort of a scramble to find my two bags um, because I'm bringing a lot of stuff back with me. So I didn't film after that because I was just like, okay, I have my bags. I walked out, my family was there. And so I just completely forgot to end the vlog, but that's a good thing because that means everything went smoothly and there was nothing else for me to like deal with. So thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.